Okay, I think we are recording. I'm pretty sure we are. All right, so this was the last slide that we have, um, all right, that we have um, uh, seen uh, last time when we had the class in person. Uh, actually, you know what, the online and in-person um, um, scheduling works in a way that uh, with this course, this term, all the classes are going to be uh, posted online uh, because <clears throat> it just works that way. So some uh, first part, some uh, one group is going to get the first part online. The other gr group is going to get the second part online. As a result, all the classes are going to be posted online. So you know that's good for uh, for your studying lectures and things like that. All right. Uh, so before we start, we're going to take a little tiny bit of a reviewing, uh, just to make sure that we understand the concepts. Mm, where is my Photoshop? There it is. All right. So, um, and I'm going to encourage you to participate, uh, whether you want to type things or if you want to pipe in on voice, uh, go ahead. Uh, um, the more the merrier, all right? It just shows that you participate. Okay, so what do we have here? No, there we go. Dum, da -dum, da -dum, da -dum. And sometimes you're going to have a little dot here. All right. What is this? What does this thing remind you of? <clears throat> Inductor. We got the. We got Nicholas saying that it is, yes, it is an inductor. Now. What kind of a device is an inductor? An inductor is a device that will have resistance. It will have reactants. And it is inductive reactants as opposed to XC, which would be capacitive reactants. And it does have impedance. All right. So, the resistance is very, well, in some, for the most part, is almost negligible because it's just a wire. Now, if you have a lot of wounds, yes, the resistance is going to add and you're going to have some sort of, in some cases, resi resistance is going to be more significant than in other cases. <clears throat> right? What's big there is the, uh, what's important is the reactants, which is the um, well, XL, inductive reactants. And inductive reactance is a resistance that depends on the frequency that is applied to the input of the coil right? or the inductor or passed through the inductor. And the uh, <clears throat> impedance is the combination of reactance and resistance. Right? So the more, the higher the frequency that passes through the coil, the better, also the, the, the greater resistance is going to be. And if you decrease the frequencies that pass through this inductor or a coil, then the inductor or coil is going to resist less. So that's why we have some, it's called reactive resistance, because it depends on the frequency. All right, <clears throat> now let's get this here. I'm going to get another inductor. And the dot just signifies the beginning of the winding, the direction of the winding. So, if we have a <clears throat> one inductor and we pass the AC current through it, it is going to create a magnetic field, and the magnetic field is going to induce itself right onto the other one, it's going to affect the other winding, and it's going to cause voltage across the terminals and if there is a load excuse me <coughs> talking too much lately um as always i always say that um <clears throat> if there is an ac passing through this one coil 
it is going to cause a magnetic field around it. That magnetic field is going to affect the other winding and it's going to create a voltage. And if there is a load connected to it, it is going to cause a current flow through the other system. Elect uh, electrically, uh, they are separate. Physically, they are separate windings. So they're isolated electrically. However, magnetically, they are coupled. That means uh, that well, we have a system. Now, what do now? So now we have something that's called a transformer. Right? This is still a review from the last time. Now, what do transformers pass? Transformers. They transform, not, not transform, they transfer power. Power goes through. P1 equals P2. Now, is it really, is, does it really equal? Yes, pretty much it does. The power that is dissipated in the first winding it is going to be equal to the power that's dissipated or being used up <clears throat> in the second uh, secondary coils the efficiency of the transform or transformers is quite high in the range of well 98 99 sometimes percent which is quite high for efficiency if you have a motor electric motor induction motor or uh, synchronous motor or or three-phase motor, two-phase motor, whatever else, DC motor, the efficiency as far as what has to be supplied as power and what power you're actually getting out of it, it's uh, not as high as 99%, for sure. 70, 75%, eh, 80, that would be a high efficiency motor, right? Uh, <clears throat> Transformers are very efficient in the range of 99, 98%. What do they transform? They transform voltage. They transform current. And they transform impedance, which is extremely important to us right now. Because if we have um, something that's coming in from 8 ohms, it's coming into the system, and we need to deliver the signal to a bunch of other systems, small subsystems, that are also 8 ohms, 8 ohms, 8 ohms each. You're going to have a step-up transformer to go into impedance of maybe 1500 ohms. And we're talking ohms, ohms. And these are ohms, right? about 1500 ohms so stepping up and then we're going to step down to 8 ohms so the line the main line is going to be having impedance high impedance so we're stepping it up into high impedance from the low impedance and then from the high impedance we are stepping down to the low impedance that lets us connect these all the loads in such way uh, in all in parallel okay. the reason for that is so we don't have to um, so we don't have to do if you have like 200 speakers to be connected in the hallway large hallway we don't have to do the serious parallel combination so we end up as 8 ohm on the as a total resistance or impedance of all the speakers we could just uh, use the transformers and keep adding, keep adding, keep adding. So that's, I just, this is, I said that in the last, uh, during the last class, and now I'm repeating this thing. I just want to make sure <clears throat> that, uh, that you guys are getting this. Because you're going to have, you're going to uh, use this system a lot, uh, the PA systems. A lot of the commercial PA systems are organized that way. When it comes to, Installing a PA system is not just a home stereo or so you can play your video games. 
which is really important as well. I understand that. But uh, that's not how you make money. Although some people do make money, uh, some people do make money playing video games. But that's another complete story. Uh, we're talking about making money installing systems. Uh, <clears throat> so PA systems are going to be interfaced uh, to a lot of other things, especially a lot to the phone systems. And we're going to tackle that as we go along. All right, so transformers transform voltage, they transform current, they transform impedance, they keep power right through. All right. Uh, now, again, uh, as uh, why do we need to uh, match the impedances? If you have the impedance matching transform, because the, the transformer, the step up transformer is going to match the impedances. So why do we need to match the impedances? Why do we need to have impedances? So if there's any kind of a device that has certain impedance, uh, that goes, transfers the signal to another device, the impedances have to be equal or matched. Okay? <clears throat> if we don't, we don't get something that's called a maximum power transfer. So for the question, if somebody asks you, wink, wink, if somebody asks you, I wonder who would that be and when? Uh, why do we need to match the impedances between whatever device that outputs the signal to a device that is receiving the signal? The answer is maximum power transfer for the maximum power transfer. If the impedances are not equal or not matched, then we don't get a full transfer of a signal. Where does the, uh, the stuff that doesn't get through, uh, where does it go? It goes into heat most of the time. All right. <clears throat> there you go, Tristan. All right. I'm going to... So... When we look at this here, that's what it is. Here's impedance matching. Here's a low impedance, and here's high impedance. This is a constant voltage system. Why is it called, called constant voltage system? Well, it, because, <clears throat> look at this. This line, everything is connected par in parallel, and if things are connected in parallel, what is common to all the devices that are connected in, in parallel? Well, voltage. Right? Now, in um, in the industry, in the audio industry or the telecommunications industry, if you will, we have two kinds of those <clears throat> constant voltage systems or distributed audio systems. Same thing. Excuse me. We have uh, 70 volt systems and we have 25 volt systems. If you <clears throat> have an amplifier with an output labeled if you decide to use 25 volt system you make sure that the speaker stations are designed for the 25 volt system if you decide to use a 70 volt system on the output of the amplifier and the transformer if you have to buy an external one or it could be the built-in one then the outputs are going to be labeled then if you use the 70 volt system you need to get speaker stations that are designed to handle 70 volt systems some of this most of the speaker stations are able to handle both and um, on the little transformer here that you're going to see see here 70 volt line and it's explained here which color is going to give you how many watts maybe on the other side of the transformer there's a, there's a there's a list of 20 fall, uh, sorry, 25 volt uh, line, and then it's going to give you what colors uh, of the wire to connect. What colors do you connect? Well, you get the common ones. See, there is a black that is common. Um, and then you get whichever one other one you want to connect. So the secondary winding of the step down transformer, this will be step up transformer because it steps up the impedance and then the one steps down the impedance. Here's 8 ohms, here's 8 ohms, here is about 1500 ohms or so. Uh, <clears throat> so here is 8 ohms, permanently installed, permanently installed, nothing changes here. Now here, you can tap. Taps are when you're winding the coil, once upon a time, you bring it out, 
bring the, uh, the, the the connection out. And then you keep winding, keep winding, bring it out so you can connect right into that spot. Uh, bring it out so you can connect to that spot and so on, right? So depending on which stage you tap into the transformer or the coil, it's going to tell you how many, you know, it's, you know, well, it's, going, it's going to make the system grab so much power. So these uh, are labeled, like for example, if you connect the black and the blue, like here, this will be the black and just blue, then you're going to mm, drain five watts out of the system. When is it you're going to dry, dry, drain five watts out of the system? When the system is fully crunked at the full volume, you're going to grab this, well, this, well, this one here on this spot, it's going to grab one watt at the f if the if the amplifier is turned up high full volume and the signal is full then it's going to grab one watt this one here this speaker station is going to grab two watts this one here is going to grab one watt and so on and these are not going to see because the impedance is the impedance here is so high does this affect if you change the tap on any other yes it affects just a tiny little bit not enough to make a difference so if you tap things at different taps that one here if you retap it it's not going to affect everything else it's just going to affect how much power this one grabs out of it right so because of the yeah thank you tristan there you go uh <clears throat> so uh, that gives us a so much freedom of connecting. Um, if you need to add one more hallway or so on, and on, how do we calculate? Let's say all of them are tapped at one watt, and the amplifier is capable of producing 200 watts. Then we can connect 200 of those, because we just add the wattage that is being consumed by each station. Yeah. All right. So that's as far as review of that. Now, um, here's the last slide from that. Uh, just a little um, thing that you need to know as far as physical installation of things. That's what the speaker tiles look like here. And uh, when, when, you, when we're dealing with drop ceiling. Now, this is a very low drop ceiling. It's just right above the, um, right above the framing. Sometimes there's 10 or 20 feet up and then you, you get to meet the true ceiling. Um, now, when it comes to installing devices in the ceiling tiles, ceiling tiles are a soft material. So if you connect uh, the whole speaker station just like that, with time, this ceiling tile is going to sag and actually the speaker can fall through. So what happens, you use the f uh, framing or railing system. These rails, sometimes they look like this. And sometimes they're just rails without that uh, thing in the middle here, this all assembly construction thing in the middle. It depends who produces that. So here's the speaker baffle with the speaker guts right there. Speaker, ADOM speaker, or loudspeaker, I should say. And here's the step down transformer. And it's assembled right onto the baffle. This framing goes on the top side of the ceiling. <clears throat> The speaker loudspeaker assembly or station is mount, mounted to the bottom side. Now, the length of these rails is calculated to be reaching from here to here, so the rails rest on the frame. And you just cut out a hole in that and mount it, and everything is mounted on the ceiling tile. However, when you put the ceiling tile with the framing, all the weight is being rested on the rails not on the ceiling tile. That's important. All right, now here's the other coin, other side of the coin uh, when it comes to PA systems. Uh, portable PA systems. You can have a portable PA system that, uh, well, you can set up in one hour. This one here takes a bit longer than two hours, then or maybe five hours. It takes about two weeks to assemble. And once this thing gets assembled, here's another picture of the same thing. It looks like this. 
so all that all the whole the whole work is just so some sort of a more complicated version of this system can be installed <laughs> all right what's being installed per, uh, temporarily on that portable stage is this system except it has a lot a lot a lot more wires now the when it comes to live performance this is a typical live performance stage setup okay. now <clears throat> uh, we can have two kinds of systems well there's always two kinds i always split things eh? i just keep putting the forks in the road <clears throat> This can be in analog form, the good old school analog form, which uh, is being used less and less simply because the digital systems uh, constantly are you know, coming down on in price. Do they? Some of the equipment costs a lot. Um, you know. um, now it depends what kind of venue. The digital systems are becoming more and more popular. Now, the digital system is the same as analog, analog system, but uh, it's just solved a little bit different. And instead of when it comes to mm, digital systems, all the plugins or mm, devices like a compressor, echo, reverb, um, limiter, whatnot and whatnot, all kinds of sound effects, and process processing units, they can be included in the mixing board for a little bit more money than if you had that without it. But if you had an analog system, you would have to get a physical piece of equipment for every single one of the, those effects, and it would cost you a lot more, more a lot more money. Plus, you know, digital is becoming more compact and easier to carry and whatnot. Um, but let's just take a, 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 a whether this is digital or analog, doesn't matter. Some of the elements are going to be the same. So, here's the thing that's called a front of the house. Front of the house is where the audience is. It's called front of the house. Then we have the no man's land, or a lot of man's land, and women's land, people's land, right? the audience. And then we have the stage. What's happening? What's happening in, on the stage? Look, there's a stage box. Here's a mysterious type of a thing. Um, you don't want to open the stage box. No, it was a Pandora's box. Okay, but stage box. What do we have? We have a bunch of inputs that are combined into one spot. So you can plug in microphones, instruments, pretty much microphones and instruments <laughs> into it. Um, and that is being, con the, all the signals are being combined into, well, not combined, but it's going to be gathered over. If it's an analog system, then you're going to have a bunch of wires in a very thick cable that is called a snake. And snake is a cable that uh, has a lot of cables in it. So if this is a 24 channel snake, it's going to have 24 cables going from the stage box into the front of the house. And it could be 200, 100, 200 feet long. Now, let's say it could be 24, uh, 24 uh, channel snake with, let's say, four or six returns. What does it mean? Well, in the stage box, there are a bunch of inputs. So you plug in things in instrument, 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 microphone, micro, whatever. 24 you can plug in. But you need to send the signal back to the stage box. So these are the returns. So this would be the female input and the male output at this end. So you have 24 channels and you just go take the snake to the mixing board. If it's an analog system, you can just plug in one from 1 to 24. They are numbered. Uh, it takes a while to plug those in because you have to plug them in order to the inputs. And then you can control all the inputs 
from these inputs of the box. Pretty nifty system. Then you have the outputs on the amplifier. Oh, not the amplifier. Mixing board. <clears throat> no amplifier. Amplifiers are about this stage. Uh, so then you have the returns, and you plug into the same snake. So, but this is a female here and a male here. So it will be 24 females here and maybe four males. Because then you have the returns, because the outputs are in the male form, and you can plug into the same snake and send the channel signal back to the stage box. Except these signals are raw from all the instruments, and these would be the processed signals that could be connected to the amplifiers, the amplification system, and then sent to the loudspeakers, and so on. We are mounting the amplifiers, again, uh, right by the stage. Because, if the, as I said before, the impedance of the inputs is within range of 600 ohms. Then, if you have 600 ohms of an impedance that is supposed to be received by something that is also can receive 600 ohms and be okay with it, then if you have 200 feet of a cable, well, maybe 22 gauge cable, stranded conductor, um, then the accumulative resistance, just because of the length of the cable, you might get maybe uh, well, 2 or 3 ohms. It adds up. But 2 or 3 ohms, comparing to the 600 ohms, eh, it's quite insignificant, right? However, when you come to the speakers, the speakers are 8 ohms. And some of the more commercial ones, the commercial ones, more commercial, let's come, some of the commercial stuff for the big rigs, they, uh, they are 4 ohms, just so you can pump more current through it. So if you have 4 ohm speaker uh, impedance, and if you accumulate the speaker wire from the mixing board over a longer distance, you might add, well, because there will be thicker wire, let's say you add 1.5 ohms in the cable, or maybe 2 ohms. So if you have 2 ohms in the cable, and if you have 4 ohms in the speaker, then those things are quite comparable, those two impedances. Which means a lot of, if you have, which means a lot of signal would just go um, into heat. Not a very efficient system. So, for that reason, we place the amplifiers as close to the speakers as possible. So, you put them right on the stage. And we send the output of, um, let's say, about 600 ohm impedance into the input of the amplifier, which is also about 600 ohm impedance, and the amplifier pumps out 4 ohms and goes to the speakers, but they're close to it. What else do you have? Do we have here on the stage? We have the monitor speakers, stage monitor system. This that, Now, that depends on how many, uh, how good the mixing board is, how many separate sub-channels this uh, mixing board can provide. So normally it would be just, uh, normally it would be just, uh, I don't know, um, they call it left and right. Although, when it comes to live mixing, uh, we pan those right in the middle because uh, unless you, you you want to have some sort of very special effects that you can uh, you can have. But usually, when it comes to music, stereo doesn't work uh, in open field or large halls. So the systems uh, are switched to mono. But then you get channel one, channel two. And then you have some other sub-channels that you can route the signals and combine different channels in a different way and maybe process them in a different way and send them to different sub-mix channels or groups uh, then, uh, which, could be served, which could serve as uh, stage monitor channels. So stage monitor channel would be, well, let's say that mixing board is capable of six of those. So you can have six uh, sub-mixes for the monitor, stage monitoring. So let's say the person who's sitting at the keyboard, they want to hear a little bit more drum, a little bit drum, some drums, some maybe some bass, and I want to hear a couple of guitars, and I want to have a good, uh, good, um, well, reference on the vocals, 
and those have to be I, I want them at certain time and of course I want to hear myself through it because if you're sitting on the stage and the speakers are pumping away from you you know, the way you hear things are, it's basically useless right so you need to hear something but uh, you need to have some references All right now some of the monitoring is happening in so-called in-ear monitors when you see people wearing those um, weird kind of looking headphones they're personalized for them uh, the, they take the imprint of the inside of the ear um, and um, uh, the inserts are molded in such way that once you plug them into your ears it pretty much blocks almost 100% um, almost I'm just looking at the uh, here okay at the chat line here uh, then the the earphones uh, block out pretty much everything and uh, there's a separate uh, monitor mix being sent just for the in-ear monitor so there could be a mixing board like this at the front of the house that takes care of the mix the mix of the sound for the audience and that's it there could be another separate mixing board just like it uh, somewhere at the backstage that sends the monitor mix that takes care of the monitor mix just for the people on the stage right? there could be some other other um, additional speakers on the left and on the right side of just shoving the sound sideways on the stage and they're called stage fill monitors just to give you some sort of reference of uh, so you can hear the music that you're playing and uh, you know so if you work out balance out all the volumes uh, you can have a pretty comfortable uh, pretty comfortable experience being on the stage so when it comes to that so this analog system would have a bunch of wires in the snake now if it comes to a digital system digital mixing boards the mixing board might look actually just as big or could be smaller because you would have we'll talk about digital mixing boards as well just a little bit this is an overview kind of a thing that we're de dealing with if you want to know more and if you're interested in that kind of work uh, being a roadie or uh, or anything to do with sound system um some systems audiovisual talk to me as well i've spent a lot of time doing that professionally in my uh in my years <laughs> uh okay <clears throat> i was gonna say younger years but uh yeah there we go um uh, <clears throat> so when it comes to digital Yes, you also get the stage box that you plug in because the instruments are the same. You plug the instruments, da 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 da, da no problem. But what what conveys the signal from the stage box to the mixing board takes a little bit different shape. Instead of having a bunch of wires in the snake. That then you fan out, they fan out here, and you plug them in one by one to the channel. You get a Cat 5E with an Ethernet plug here, and Ethernet cable, and an Ethernet plug right here. Just one little cable. It conveys all of it. Of course, this needs to be powered then, and all kinds of processing has to take place. So the stage box, digital stage box, will be much more expensive. Then the analog box, right? But then again, you don't have to pay for all the wires. So, uh, you know, yeah. uh, six and a half of the other, right? Um, now, what happens, what's going to happen here in the analog system when there is some kind of a problem with one of the channels or two, which happens sometimes. Maybe there's a broken wire. Maybe there's a connection that kind of got loose or whatnot. Then you can, you might hear some sort of a buzz, which could be annoying. Because, you know, especially when concert starts in an hour and there's some kind of a ground loop, which is kind of manifests itself as a buzz in the system. Uh, you can't just get rid of it. And that's very annoying and stressful. You have to find. Once you find that channel isolated, you don't use that channel. Maybe you can patch things through another channel. And you can keep going with the show right. but if there's a digital system you have an ethernet cable plugged in here ethernet plug cable plugged in here one cable 
What happens if somebody steps on the cable and pinches that with a door or whatever? A squirrel got, gets through it and bites onto it. Well, it sounds like the skies are falling. Uh, there's no some kind of a warning or a buzz. Uh, it just sounds like the storm of the storms, like a lightning thunder, and it actually can blow the frames from the speaker, diaphragms from the speaker. Uh, speakers, it can damage your ears. Kaboom! You know, uh, so mm, well, those wires should be well protected. The uh, digital wires here. Right? All right. So uh, that's as far as um, that. Now you can see things like a uh, DI box, direct input box. I think a direct input box. I think it's called. What's a DI box? Let me go back to back is going to go back to my drawing board. Uh, where's my Photoshop? Right. I just want to grab the whole proper thing. Boom. All right. Now we got this thing on the screen. Uh, let me erase that now. I have figured out how to erase those things. Boom! <laughs> Did I say that? Okay, I just love when Photoshop does to me because I got two monitors. Oh, and then there's some sub screen hidden somewhere. All right, there you go. Whew. Um, what was I talking about? DI box. That brings me to an explanation of what a balanced signal and unbalanced signal is. So, before I tell you what the direct box is, I have to explain to you what a balanced and unbalanced signal is. Let's take a look at the unbalanced signal. We have two wires. Uh, wire. Wire one goes from one end to the other all the way and wire two goes from one end to the other one is going to be the ground reference and the other one is going to be a signal wire so the ground reference is the ground reference and the signal wire is going to carry the signal well, no problem when it comes to line level signal and a microphone level signal, there are two different levels. A line level signal comes from active devices such as a keyboard that you plug into the wall and gets energy from something and it is, is capable of producing a strong signal. And they would have something like one volt peak to peak. So it will be line level. No problem. If uh, if you have that one volt peak to peak traveling through maybe even hundred feet of cable or maybe hundred fifty feet, no problem. Right? What happens if a noise happens? I'm going to zoom in a little bit. Uh, if a noise happens, it's going to have uh, you know small type of spikes. Where do we get noise from? Well. As one of my favorite teachers before was saying, Mr. Powell, greetings to you, Mr. Powell. If a Volkswagen drives by, then you're going to hear it in lines. <laughs> All right. Yeah. I can use layers, but uh, but sometimes, uh, well, then I have to pres uh, for the layers. I have to prepare things, but this is I'm just going. Uh, I'm shooting from the hip right now when it comes to explaining things. <laughs> there you go. Uh, so when a Volkswagen drives by, you're going to hear noise, and if the line level one volt peak to peak, that noise is not going to affect it much to the point that yeah, you know. Um, almost not almost not hurt but if you get a one millivolt peak to peak that will be a microphone 
microphone level. And things are a little bit different. If you have a thousand times less signal, because it will be a passive um, signal from a dynamic microphone, for example, then uh, if a Volkswagen drives by, then the noise is going to be heard in line. Quite annoying. So what do we have? Well, how do we solve the problem? Well, as I always say, somebody smart get together with somebody else who is also smart and they thought of a solution. We have a balance signal, so this is unbalanced. Unbalanced signal. You have just one ground reference and one signal line. Now, I'm going to separate that page here. Let's take care of a balanced signal. All right. We have a line that is in the middle, and that's going to be the ground reference. Then we're going to have another line that is going to provide a positive side of the signal. And then we're going to have another line that is providing a negative side of the signal. Oh, now we're talking about something. As long as the signal is a mirror image on both of these, then the signal is going to be treated as a signal. So if this goes this way here, then this one has to go this way here, something like that. Then when we have on the other side, if we have something that's called a differential amplifier, I'm giving you those terms that if you want to pursue some of your knowledge towards that, this is what you search. Differential amplifiers, op amps, operational amplifiers, differential amplifiers, audio, used in audio. Which kind of op amp would you use in audio? Will it be 741 or would it be enough? Maybe you need something else for the audio. Anyways, what happens is when a differential amplifier receives a signal on both plus and minus and if they are out of phase the signals it is going to treat it as a signal and it's going to recognize it and it's going to pass it through to be amplified more and so on out of phase 180 degrees that's a clean signal so what happens if a volkswagen drives by now even if this is a low level signal so let's see, we're going to get a spike in one of the, well, what happens? Look, when the Volkswagen drives by, it's going to produce spikes that are in phase. All right. Anything that is in phase, a differential, differential, differential amplifier is going to ignore. So this is signal, this spike here, is going to be ignored once it gets there because it's in phase. Differential amplifier only recognizes signal in those two wires that is out of phase, 180 degrees pretty much. So, in this way, low level signals can be transmitted over a long distance. You can also have 200 feet of wire you can send a microphone signal and it's still going to be quite well recognized by the differential amplifier and it's going to give you a nice clean signal. Where does the... Okay, here you go, Jay. I'm going to use levels here. Duplicate layer. Can we duplicate the layer? Background copy. There we go. <laughs> So now, I can erase this. 
Boom. Are we good? What did they erase? <laughs> See, now I have to fill in. Boom, now we have white color here. Good. We still have the we still have the old layer now we have the new layer next page good so where does the direct box come in the direct box is a box horse is a horse box is a box it's a direct box d i to the direct input box or something like that you can connect unbalanced signal here and out of there you can grab a balanced signal so you will have a nice and quarter inch jack here and the three prong type of a jack like that uh, for the uh, for the for the output and this way you can convert the unbalanced signal into the balanced signal so where is our direct box Hi. too many things there it is boom all right here's direct box you can plug in the guitar into the direct box and you can go into the snake and say so get nice and balanced signal because guitar with the passive pickups it would be a nice uh, uh <laughs> would be a nice uh, there you go jay nice um <clears throat> balanced signal out of that one right. so that's how things are being solved so now you know what the direct box is now you know what the stage monitor is so sometimes you, you hear things through the stage monitors that you want to hear sometimes the monitor mix is done through the so-called in-ear monitors and it's a separate mix there's a separate dude sitting there or dudette sitting at the separate mixing board and just does the mix just for the people who want to hear themselves on the stage and one mix and the other mix is completely independent so which means you're going to have some kind of a split signal at the stage box if it's an analog snake you're gonna have to install something that's called a split snake it costs more a bit a little bit more money uh, or if it's a digital then well the splitting of the signal is taken care of electronically all right so uh, now we know what a direct box is now we know what uh, what the basics of a stage performance uh, kind of a system uh, looks like uh, mm, what did I explain during this? This is, an exp this is a simple, um, I'm talking about what did I talk about today in in-person class. Yeah. Now, here is an example of a simple mixing board, which is pretty much same as this mixing board, except, you see, this mixing board has more of this board. This one here only has two of those channels so it's i would consider it as a two channel but i think this one is considered as a four channel because this is a couple of all those balanced inputs here or so this is either the xlr or this could be the quarter inch um i always keep forgetting what xlr stands for uh, tell me next time you see me each other i've done it for 30 years and uh try to uh, get some of the acronyms and abbreviations uh not important sometimes eh? anyways uh so uh, what does this have the balance input or if you connect the quarter inch you can also have a balanced uh, or unbalanced quarter inch quarter inch is the jack the banana plug and it has a quarter inch of diameter so that's why it's called quarter inch jack uh so if you plug in here it's mechanically solved that if you plug this one here it's going to disconnect that mechanically or if you uh if you're not plugging anything it's going to pass through while you plug in these it's pretty pretty uh swiftly uh, this, you know, organized system and what we have the first stage was the gain which would be bring you are bringing the signal to some sort of a civilized uh type of a level so it could be controlled and compared to the other signals and then you have main volume 
uh, on volume for the strip and then how you balance those out uh, sometimes you want more of something or less of something then it's going to send it right to the main mix or the monitor mix uh, and then you have the output uh, somewhere here uh, you have the main and you have the monitor somewhere mains out there you go left and right and uh, where's the monitor i think it's the monitor here um, i can't see but you'll be looking for those then there's effects uh, that can be plugged in from uh, well it can effects could be loaded from here that are built-in effects or you can plug in the auxiliary uh, input that you can mix in with the original signal just from this strip let's say this is a guitar you can plug in some additional effect <clears throat> that goes with that you can see how much you want to mix in with just that one sound from the guitar or you can use the effects from here you can dial in a effect echo reverb limiter i'm not sure if you can do limiter but these are just the sound effects that um, um make the sound sound more colorful one way or the other if i could say that and here will be the control that uh, uh, that determines how much of that effect you want to have so how much of that effect you want to be used on this particular channel right? and if you know each channel has that so you got a couple it's a very simple mixing board you have headphones out sometimes people ask what's the tape in tape out what's the heck with the tape what's going on with the tape well a long time ago there would be the tape decks tape cassettes or reel to reel tape you could tape whatever comes out of the mixer send it to tape if you want to record the show or you could play it back from the tape. So as years go by, different devices got invented, but things were not changed as the terminology. You wouldn't say, so, okay, CD player. Oh, okay. You wouldn't say, oh, it's a MP3 player, whatever. Tape, it just stayed that way. Right? Now, when it comes to uh, uh, analyzing different uh, things, the big mixing boards are the same as like the small mixing boards, except they're a lot heavier. And they have more of those channels and they have more of those so-called sub groups so you can send not just for the mains left and right you can send some of those you get more knobs here so this signal can be sent to some of it could be sent to one group a little bit to the other group and you know, see if you have group that is designated for a monitor mix to be on the stage you can on that one there you can give oh i want to give more piano okay i'll give you more piano on that one uh on this one i can also want to get more, more 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 vocals yeah i can give you more vocals on that one and so on right then this is virtually cluttered board. yes it is uh xlr thank you jay external line return okay that's why i don't remember because it doesn't mean a damn thing to me sort of uh somebody called it that way and um that's it external line return xlr right but xlr when you see xlr that is the three prong uh that's the three prong inputs mm -hmm. um that's why i don't remember that right? okay so now i have uh, i have finished this last class in person class uh at this slide so i'm going to stop it right here plus we are yes we are running out of time as well so things uh, are pretty much we are synchronized with the other group uh right on and uh, the next thing uh, next time we're going to see each other we're just going to finish up in the beginning finish up on some of the PA systems and that's it we're going to leave it if somebody wants to know more talk to me but we're going to go on with other content of uh, that is associated with this course all right uh gals and guys uh, have a good weekend enjoy it and i will see you well when i see you <laughs> yeah next week sounds good